So we are multifaceted human beings and we are not just our physiology, we are not just our psychology, but we are emotional and spiritual beings as well. And we can look at these four parts of us in terms of the brain. And if some of those parts of us are sleeping, uh, then we could definitely become depressed, anxious, afraid and stressed. And if we think to ourselves, why would a brain sleep? Um, the obvious answer would be because it's tired. If you are stressed, exhausted, burnt out, and you are using your conscious awakening time to uh, keep getting tasks done, never taking a break, uh, never taking time for restoration, your brain can grow tired just like anything else. And if it's tired for long enough, it can fall asleep. And our brains have a front and a back. And we can see these on neural imaging. We can see uh, brains that are literally asleep in the front um, and might be very, very active in other parts. For example, if we are stressed and in a survival mode, our um, limbic brains uh, will be very, very active while other parts, our creative sides, our empathy, our warmth, our ingenuity, our inspiration, all those parts of the brain can be asleep neurologically and scientifically speaking. So we also have an upstairs and a downstairs of the brain and we can operate from either one of those perspectives at any given moment in time and operating from a front or prefrontal cortex and operating from the top of the brain. It's very, very different from somebody who is operating from um, the base of the brain and the hind brain. So we could literally look at a brain uh, as being downstairs, and this would be our limbic system, our stress survival responses. And then we could look at the upstairs of the brain which is where our creativity and ingenuity come. And that part of the brain we find is often asleep. So we are operating from a lizard brain perspective, which is our million year old brain. And that's very much focused on survival, food, sex, sleep, uh, the very, very basics of life. And I would say if we became depressed, then we would need to look at scientifically at how we are using our brain and that brings us to another thing when I say to you how are you using your brain it means that there should be an operator there should be a witness to what is going on uh, inside you there should be a manager managing um, which parts of the brain you are accessing on a daily basis so consciously, without a doubt, the research shows that we can, uh, through practice, through meditation, through mindfulness and contemplation, we can use tools to access different parts of our brain that may be asleep. Um, we can even use things like hypnosis and so on to do the very same thing in a matter of minutes. So there's no doubt that the research points to mindfulness, and um, any kind of meditative practice to really waking up our consciousness enough so that we can create something new for ourselves. There's very little that you're gonna create in the downstairs of your brain. Um, you know, I always say never show a hungry person the view. Uh, they're not gonna be able to see aesthetic beauty when uh, they are thinking about where their next meal's gonna come from, where their next paycheck's gonna come from. And the part of the brain um, that is associated with survival will be very, very active. So people are often talking about transformation and awakening. And I think we just need to look at that. We don't listen to the word, uh, you know, you need an awakening experience, literally, to transform your life and get out of a depressed state if you are stressed, you become sleepy, your brain becomes sleepy, or depressed and stressed, and it is a state that some people stay in for decades, for a lifetime.
but the answer is that you can awaken from those states and people often say to me how can you treat our depression um, I don't want to treat your depression at all in fact we don't want to treat depression any longer it's 2021 and what you rather need to do than continue trying to treat depression if it hasn't worked for you in the last two, two three decades then stop treating it and move on to something else that is transformation that is an awakening experience is stopping what you are doing we need to stop doing what doesn't work and that is the first aspect of any kind of transformative process or awakening processes not being able to go but being able to stop and that is where we start with any treatment is uh, stopping the neural pathways that are in the downstairs or the hind brain for example and accessing new ones so it's literally like walking down a different street uh, or a new chapter in a book it's not necessary to keep writing the same chapter uh, over and over again it'll make you tired it'll make you angry uh, and it'll make you hopeless so rather than do that when we look at transformation, awakening, a shift in consciousness, a paradigm shift, we are looking really at stopping um, the perceptions, the feelings, the thoughts and the emotions that no longer work for us, uh, that are based in learned memory and looking for new ones. And this has happened for people overnight. We've got the incredible awakening stories from Eckhart Tolle, from uh, Deepak Chopra from uh, who had a dark night of the soul experience himself until he dealt with the question of who am I and um, and managed to get through that as he is a conscious being um, not only physically or psychologically or emotionally but he is consciousness itself and that moved him through to the next level of his life where he literally has been one of the people that changed the world much like Eckhart Tolle is doing right now, much like Neil Donald Welsh has done, and so many other teachers that we have um, who have gone through uh, awakening experiences. Dr. Joe Dispenza is another one. Um, so, so the stories are really endless about how we can wake up consciously and wake up the brain to something new and profound that can change our lives so scientifically it's easy to see uh, through imaging that our brains are asleep we can see it on an image in a matter of, of moments um, but we are not only our brains there is a lot more consciousness out there than that is happening in the mind um, so it's not only your brain that needs to wake up it is also your emotions your empathy your you know functioning from the heart is something that is based in self-love and if you develop self-love you will like meets like and you will eventually see um, and experience the love that you feel on the inside in things that you see um, hear and experience on the outside so yes love is contagious and you are either filled with fear or with love and one is based in the downstairs of the brain and the other um, at the very, very top. So if we look at consciousness, we must look beyond the brain. And we can do that when we see people and examine them when they sleep. And science today is obviously saying that we are not conscious, um, or at least minimally, minimally conscious when we sleep. However, when we dream, our consciousness is uh, experienced um, in a very very high state and we can find that in meditation it happens in much the same way we can find that in contemplative practices when we are still and when we focus on silence or a centering word or do any practice uh, like that we can actually get more consciousness uh, rippling through our physiology psychology our emotions and of course what is spiritual today which is you being a witness of the self 
And when you awaken to the fact that you are more than just the mundane, when you are more than just what is happening in your depressive state, um, you might not be able to see it if you've experienced that depressive state for many, many years. And you might need to see a psychologist or a life coach or a counselor to help you see things in a different light. Uh, because when we change the way we look at things through consciousness, the things we look at really, really do change. And that is a miracle in itself. And so speaking of consciousness and miracles, um, you know, we either experience nothing as a miracle or everything as a miracle. And, you know, we will see that um, oxygen is uh, highly explosive and hydrogen is highly explosive in itself. And when we bring the two together, uh, it gives us life and we can breathe. And breath, meaning spirit, um, is really, really the higher consciousness that we find. So everything seems to be a miracle or nothing is. And so of course in miracles will teach us that nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists and here lies the peace of God. So that consciousness and that peace that they speak of is the opposite of where depression leads you. Depression and anxiety are neurological as well as spiritual experiences um, that can be referred to as a dark night of the soul. So if nothing real can be threatened, you need to go and look for an awakening in that space, in your brain, your emotions and your soul or consciousness as it's called today so many different words for it and find the like in the consciousness out there in the world that others are experiencing that does resemble the peace of God 